All right, so my challenge now is that I really like my composition without that foreground glacier. And so I'm going to show you the, the real value of compositing is that I get to turn this reference into whatever I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it up. So it's really this kind of tower thing that's blocking what I want. And I'm going to command exit. So if I hit command X, it's going to delete it. Got to make sure I'm on the right layer. It's going to delete it, but put it on the clipboard. And then I'll do command V and it will paste it onto a new layer for me. And then I can use it somewhere else. Like over here to cover the road on that side. Or I can even push it more into the foreground by making it bigger. Because I do want to make this feel like a fantasy landscape where there's some, you know, ice and snow mixed in with the other elements. The other thing I need is kind of weather. This looks very bright and serene here. I don't really want it to be. My sketch, if I remember correctly, let me go look. Let's see, it said dusk, long diffused shadows, ruins of wooden shacks, future earth possibly, high mountains. So I don't need it to look as pretty as the reference looks, in other words. Um, I also have this kind of fun element in here. How can I play with that and make it kind of sink in? Well, I can get rid of these background darks. I can select and mask to soften that just slightly. Soften that edge so those pixels aren't so so sharp at the edge. See like that. And then let's kind of sink it in behind. Or even check this out. This is a little crazy, but it's going to go into what the other things I'm showing you. I'm going to stretch it. Ooh, it could be a fish. I'm going to stretch it, but I want this kind of texture of those ice crystals. frozen tiger show. It does. So I want those textures of the ice crystals to affect what's underneath. And so what I'm going to try is an overlay or a pin light. Ah, oh, there we go. Or a soft light. And you see that it gives a little bit of something, but the colors are all crazy. So I'm going to push it behind the glaciers. And I am going to play with the color balance and make it cool instead of warm. <clears throat> so it looks like that, right? I'm going to use the large soft eraser, even larger. And get rid of these hard edges at the top. And I'm using this as kind of an atmospheric effect. I'm going to darken its midtones using levels, but brighten its highlights to really bring that texture out. And I can use hue saturation, so not just color balance, but hue saturation. So you've been asking about this to diminish the intensity of the color. Like so. Oops, I brightened it up way too much. Now, if I try soft light, it kind of works. Put some ice crystals on the, uh, the water tower there. If I use normal, take the opacity down, 
you see that that's going to look kind of fake. So by doing pin light, that looks a little, little too sharp. Overlay, that's a little, yeah, it's kind of nice actually on the, on the water tower. So then I can just erase away where I don't want it. Or better yet, use a lower opacity brush now. So I can erase away more selectively. Where is my Uh -huh. So it's all about transforming it, making it into your own thing. And you see how the ice is kind of now coming from this side, and those shadows are deep. And this composition I'm a little bit happier with than what I had before. And then I can always take the opacity down on that, what's called the texture overlay that I just did. But now if we look at the water tower, it doesn't look so awkward with the ice in front of it because it's got that kind of frozen, more dramatic texture. Very pops in the texture. Yep. All right. So now let's just clean up the elements. And then we're going to add some other texture fills to create atmosphere. So what do I need? I need my lasso. And now I'm just going to get serious with these little elements. So I'm going to select them and then use my eraser at a lower opacity to make sure I've gotten rid of all the hard edges. But I want a little bit of that kind of bluish glow. There's not so much. And that allows me to control it without losing any of my iceberg. So you can select to kind of give yourself a stencil of what to affect. And then I can use that sharpen tool if I feel like I'm losing it. And then I can use the burn tool behind to really help it stand out. So again, always kind of squinting, looking at your composition. It's easy to overdo with burn, so make sure you're at a low exposure. Burn the grass a little. How dare you? I can burn the edge of the water tower a little. I need to sharpen this up. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso for that to cut out the water tower exactly where I want it. And compositing is more, more about the big picture than it is about super fine details, it, at least to learn the basics like what we're doing. We want it all to be high resolution, but there's like chain link fences and all that kind of stuff. Not everything needs to have the same impact visually. I'm going to use the dodge tool to brighten up the mid-tones on the edge of this water tower. So it kind of shows up a little bit better. Oop. Now that I've cut that edge up. 
And then these transitions, I might even go to a slight, slightly sharper brush for my eraser. So I can cut them out with a little more confidence. All right. So it's looking better and better. It's nice to use your tablet so you can use the pressure sensitivity on the brush as well. So I'm at a lower opacity eraser now because now we're just fine tuning. And I get to decide kind of which elements come through. And having a texture overlay of those ice crystals from the popsicle, that helps. It's even like little beer can there. All right. Now, what's nice about having the move tool auto select on is even if I'm in the eraser, now I'm going to stay in this eraser tool for a while, I can use the command button to go back to the move tool. And then any layer I select on, as long as it's not something I'm looking through, it should select it. So that's another shortcut. I gotta find there it is. I erase this back. And now I'm erasing with a soft edge, but with more control. So I can really blend these edges in. And I'm going to do that up through. Now I'm working foreground to background because that's how your eye will take in the image. And I, remember, I can use my magic wand to kind of select areas, but now just to do a really light erasing of not full opacity because I'm blending. Things will start to sit together better. I can use dodge, bring out that church spire a little bit, that cross. I can use sharpen. Help it catch the light. And if that's too much, I can use a new tool, which is under Dodge and Sharpen. It's like hue saturation, but as a tool, which is called the sponge tool. And I can set it to dim the color, to desaturate. Because when you burn and when you dodge, sometimes it can make the colors more extreme than you want them to be. All right, what else? Foreground looks good. Let's see, on the water tower, I've sharpened it along that edge, but I can also maybe now burn it a little bit. Now that it's got that texture. And then the ice flows. Let's see, I'm going to take the levels of this, this one and darken them a little bit, just a little bit. Maybe limit their highlights so that this comes forward more. Curious what would happen if I just stretch this out. No, but if I wanted to change the shape of it, I certainly can. Just like you can create your own mountains, I'm going to create my own edge here. Let's cut that out. So it's not such a focal point. Okay. 